Fundamentally, what the carbon tax is about is if a company has got a, a certain amount of greenhouse gas emissions, um, then it started off by saying the price of carbon is 120 rand a ton. However, the first 60% of the emissions is tax free, as you see over here, um, and on 40% of the emissions, you will pay a tax of 120 rand a ton. So if we take that and we take 120 rand, 40% um, of that gives you an average starting point of 48 rand per ton of, of, uh, uh, as a starting point for the carbon tax. The first relief measure, the set of two, is for companies who are trade exposed and companies who've got process emissions. And for each of them, you can reduce your taxable emissions by 10%. Which means effectively that if you are trade exposed, you reduce by 10%, then it actually represents 25% of your tax liability. So um, the impact of it is bigger than just the 10%, and then for certain companies, for certain industries, there are process emissions also an additional 10%. At the moment, there's no provision in the policy document whatsoever for a bottom limit. Um, and that's one of the issues that, uh, that we've raised in our comments. Um, I think it's problematic. Um, if you look at countries around the world, um, some of the Canadian provinces have got a cutoff of about 5,000 tons of CO2 per year. In Australia, they work on 15,000 on installation level and 25,000 on a corporate level. Um, so most countries who've got carbon taxes have got some sort of a minimum level. The other thing that's not specified at all in the policy document, and if it is, I've overread it and I apologize, but it does not actually say that the tax base of companies is companies. Um, because we had a guy saying, but as an individual, what will I do? And I said, um, obviously it's not relevant to you. And he said, but well, he doesn't say that. He doesn't <laughs> say that. <laughs> okay. um, so there's no comment on things like municipalities, NGOs, private individuals. Um, it, it appears that state-owned enterprises will be taxed because they talk about taxing of ESCOM, but there's no comment about municipalities or provinces or um, other government bodies like that. First of all, the principle is stated as being a tax calculated on uh, fuel consumption multiplied by an emission factor. And then they said that DIA, the Department of Environmental Affairs, will publish the emission factors. And that sounded fine. But then you get to a point where they say they've got a relief mechanism for process emissions. But process emissions does not result from fuel consumption. And the principle of the tax is fuel consumption. So there is a, um, a discrepancy. So th that's the starting point. The next point is um, there's no indication about what accounting principles must be used. Internationally, there's two basic sets of accounting principles. The one is used by countries to do their carbon footprint, which on a country level we normally refer to as a greenhouse gas inventory. And the second is for, for, for corporates. Um, the, the countries do it on the IPCC, the Inter Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which is a body of the United Nations that sits in Switzerland. <coughs> um, and companies normally do it on the basis of the greenhouse gas protocol. There's no indication in this document whatsoever. Um, they use some of the principles of the IPCC, but there is no reference to the accounting standard. Um, and then following on that, there's no reference whatsoever to the audit requirements. For instance, if you look at, at paying of uh, company's tax um, on, on, on your profits, the Tax Act does not require you to audit your financial because the Companies Act requires it. Um, but there's no Companies Act for greenhouse gas emissions. There's nothing else that requires you to audit your carbon footprint. Um, so it's a very, very big shortcoming in the, um, in the document that the accounting principles are not specified and that the, um, the, accounting, the, the audit standard is not specified.